Hello, and welcome to Radical Functions. Let's start with a definition. A square root or nth root is called a radical expression. So if we have a little, little square root box with an x under there, or maybe there's an n or a number inside that little nook, the x is called the radicand, the thing under the radical. The radicand is the thing under the radical. n is called the index. Square roots have an index of 2. They're so frequent that we don't write them, a lot like our logarithms, right, with a base of 10. So common, common logarithm, that we don't write it. Square roots use so frequently, we don't actually write the 2. Any other root, we have to write it. Absolutely have to. Because if it's not written, it's assumed to be a 2. On our calculator, we do have a button that will give us nth roots. Uh, go to math. And uh, actually, go to math, and then number five right here. So we have a cube root, we have an x root, but we have to put in our number first. Let me show you. So if I wanted the fourth root, fourth root of 16, that's how I would enter it on my calculator. Okay. But we could also use rational or fractional exponents. So that n, that index, is always our denominator of 1 over n, right? x to the power of 1 over n. So the radical is the same, the index is the same as the denominator of a rational exponent. Okay, so let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's uh, see what happens. Given the function f of x equals 3.2 times the sixth root of x, find the following. 3.2, the sixth root of x. Okay, so I'm going to do 3.2. I'm going to do this in two different ways. Uh, that x should be replaced by a 45. To the power of 1 sixth. Uh, let me change this over here first in the notes. That's not accurate. I want to make sure I correctly write what you guys need to see. Um, I could do it the 1 6th power. I could also do 3.2 times. And then come down here to math, number 5. I'll put a 6 up there. And throw in the 45. Either way, I should get the exact same answer. Uh, the instructions do not tell me how to round, so I'm going to assume two decimal places. Uh, the exact answer is a great answer, uh, but we, when we want to find it, it'll have instructions on how, how you should round. So my apologies for not having those ahead of time. Estimate numerically x such that f of x equals 16. So we replace that f of x with 16. Now it says estimate. And estimate because we currently do not have a method for solving these. In order to estimate, I'm going to use my grapher. So I'm going to put 16 in for uh, the left-hand side. I'm going to put 3.2. And then I'm going to put a parenthesis. I'm going to put the 6 math, the 6th root of x, because I want to graph it. I want to find out where these two are equal to each other, right? The left-hand side is y1. The right-hand side is y2. I'm going to check my window. The left-hand side is 16. It seems like my y values better at least go to 16. Uh, let's make it 18. Let's see. There's y equals 16. Oh, it's going to be way out there, isn't it? So we need to increase in our x positive direction. I'm all for big jumps. I don't like to do this more times than I have to. And that was not nearly big enough. So let's make it a huge jump. And I didn't do enough. Wow, estimate numerically, huh? All right. 
I don't know about you, but I want to just get to it. So I'm going to take the biggest jump I can and see if I can get there. Oh my goodness. Why can't I find this answer? See how those jumps get bigger and bigger? And just to make these marks not so hideous, I, uh, I change the scale each time too. It's over a thousand. Yep, going big. Yes, there are better ways of doing this. Quicker, easier, faster, more understandable. Um, but I'll show you those in the next video. Estimate numerically is, is kind of a guess and check world. It's, it's not awesome. Uh, 4,000, oh my goodness. I've had about enough of this. See how my x-axis, those marks are really close together now? It's because I didn't change my scaling, and that's still not enough. Oh my goodness. So with 12,000, now that I put 1,000 for my x scale, now they're spread out again. Please, just touch it. Please, somewhere. Nope. This is getting frustrating, I gotta tell you. I'm gonna take this up to 20,000. And this is the last one. If it doesn't work out here, I'm going to change my notes. I'm gonna change my example. I'm gonna, okay, good. We finally found it. Now we can see where these two lines actually cross, where these two lines are equal. That was painful. Now we wanna calculate the intersection. In order to calculate that intersection, we're going to let our calculator do the work. So over here on calculate, it's in blue, so I push the blue button first. Number five is intersect. So you could scroll down or you could press five. And is it, it's saying, is the first curve called Y1? Yes. Is the second curve called Y2? Yes. And where do you think this intersection is? I think it's right there. And it's going to tell me right here that my x value is 15,625. That was rough. That's a 16. Oh my goodness, I'm just going to make that worse. So let's draw it correctly. But that's the way it goes sometimes as you are doing these problems. And you can always um, see how it has x equals now. If you put in a 3.2 parentheses, uh, I'm going to put an x to the 1 6th power. It's using our last x, 15,625, as, uh, as the x value. Look at that, it's 16, so we can check it. And if I just type x, so you can see, that's exactly the number it used for x. So we could check it uh, after we do all that with a graph and we kind of lose our minds a little bit, we can check and make sure that we're, we're right uh, on our, our answer as well. So that's, that's kind of handy. I like to know I'm right. I like to be right a lot, don't we all? Okay, now. That's a basic radical function. Let's talk about the domain. The domains of radical functions for even roots, so if the index is even, set the radicand, the thing inside, greater than or equal to zero to find the domain. For odd roots, so n is odd, the domain and range are both all real numbers. So we hope for odd roots on exams and things like that because it's an easy answer. Even roots, we have some work to do. So let's find the domain and range for each of these following radical functions. So let's start with the domain. So we see here our radicand is 2. It's unwritten, but it's assumed to be 2. 2 is an even number. 
So I'll take x plus 10, my radicand, uh, hand stuttered, it happens, x plus 10 greater than or equal to 0, and solve. If x is greater than or equal to negative 10, that means we'll have negative 10 to infinity for our domain. Let's not use red here. Let's use, uh, uh, I'm kind of digging this purple. For our range, a square root function. Uh, I want to go back to a, a zoom standard window. I don't want that 20,000 or whatever we had. And I'm going to stop this. Am I going to stop this? There we go. To find the range until you get used to what one of these functions looks like, we could put it in our grapher. x plus 10. When we graph it, that's the entire graph. And you could check a little bit to the left to make sure there's nothing else over there. Oh, yep, that's exactly where it starts. Notice that the y values are greater than or equal to zero. So it's zero to infinity. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw down a little fact for you here. Uh, the domain uh, f of x square root of x. The domain is positive numbers, and the range is positive numbers. Now, the domain is affected by whatever's in here. And the range is affected by whatever is out here. Sometimes there's a number out here that affects the range. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking inside the radical to affect the domain. We're going to be looking at things outside the radical to affect the range. Let's do some more examples. All right, number two. Number two, I'm going to try to leave our instructions up here. Uh, for odd roots, the domain and range are both all real numbers. So I see here, once I see the index of 7, I know my domain is all real numbers. I know my range is all real numbers. No work to be done. Those are our favorite problems uh, because they just fall into place. So of course I'm not going to give you very many of those. And that's too easy. You guys need a better challenge than that. Okay, so number three. We're looking at the index. The index is a 2, which is even. So I take 8 minus x for my domain. 8 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to move my 8 to the other side. I like to always have my variables on the left with inequalities. It just eases my head a little bit. So when I divide by negative 1, remember we have to change the direction of the inequality. And we get x is less than or equal to negative, uh, excuse me, x is less than or equal to 8. x is less than or equal to, so it goes to the left. See the little pointing arrow for the inequality? That's where the infinity is going to be on the left. All right, so we have our domain. Our range, notice we haven't added anything here. There's no number in front. Our range will be 0 to infinity. Until we do something on the outside, our range isn't going to change. All right. Number four, my domain. Index is two, that's even. So I'll take three x minus two greater than or equal to zero. Add two to both sides and divide by three. If x is greater than or equal to two thirds, then our interval is from two thirds to inf excuse me, two thirds to infinity. Now our range. Let's take a look at this one. Let's just let's just take a look. We're gonna go back to a standard window. So that always resets us to a negative ten to ten, both x and y. Let's put in our new function. Our function is the square root. And that's in blue here above the x squared, so I use the blue button first. 3x minus 2 
Now, some calculators, you have to close the parentheses here. For mine, I just come out from under. Okay, either way, same idea. And now we'll add a plus 5. Keep in mind that plus 5 is not under the radical. It's separate. Let's see what that does to the graph. It moved it up 5 units. Check it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be a range of 5 to infinity. So this number has a lot to do with the number in the range, but not always exactly as we expect, as I'll show you on number 5. For number 5, my domain, I take the inside, x plus 1, set it greater than or equal to 0. And so I'll get x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and a domain from negative 1 to infinity. Fantastic. But my range, I know it's going to have something to do with a 9, but I also mentioned we have to check out the front. So let's take a look. Let's clear that one out. Let's put in negative square root of x plus 1 come out of the radical and then add 9 and we'll graph that. Notice how this one is coming down whereas all of our other radicals were going up. The negative out in front is going to be what tells us that we are coming from below 9. So the number out off to the side after the radical, right? that's going to be involved in our range, whether it's a 5, whether it's a 9, whether it's a 0. If the radical is positive, the range will go up. If the radical itself is negative, the range will go down. That's it. That's the big deep dark secrets about domains and ranges of radical expressions. Thank you for listening.